Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Pentecost Sunday service, where something powerful happened more than 2,000 years ago. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, the disciples, they were gathered in the upper room. That's what the Bible says. They gathered together in the upper room, and as that happened, what does the Bible say? They were in one accord. They were in one accord. And I already sense the Holy Spirit of God taking me on a bit of a different uh, direction. I don't know whether he will want me to speak on the, the five things that he placed in my heart before, but you know, I'm not in control. If he wants me to change, I will change. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let me put my notes aside. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, I'm reading from verse number one. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house they were sitting. My precious people of God, this is the first thing the Holy Spirit of God is showing me right now. How many of you want to be filled by the Holy Spirit of God? You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever limit the presence of the Holy Spirit of God just to yourself. You need the Holy Spirit of God in your family. You need the Holy Spirit of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your marriage. You need the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in your family, in your ministry, at your workplace. And for this to happen, for you to have a powerful presence and a manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God, there is a powerful key that he wants us to learn today. And that is unity. Unity. Because the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One of the reasons as to why on the day of Pentecost, as to why the Holy Spirit of God was released on the disciples is because they were in unity. Where there is disunity, the Holy Spirit of God will not manifest his presence. I heard someone telling me recently <laughs> in one of the sermons that they have listened sometime back about from a very a senior, a well-seasoned man of God. He says that he was invited by a church to uh, preach. And that day when he was given the mic, the first thing the Holy Spirit got, the Holy Spirit has told him was, today I'm not going to do anything. And he has said, Holy Spirit, why? He said, look around. Only few were just worshipping the Lord. Some were having tea and coffee. Some were nibbling on biscuits. Some were having group discussions. Some were daydreaming, looking up and down, looking here and there. So there was no unity. And this preacher, has, when he took the mic, he said, oh, can I let you know what the Holy Spirit is telling me? So everyone has got excited. Yes, yes, Pastor, tell, tell. He said, the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm not going to do anything today. And he said, there was a pin drop silence at that. He said, look around. You are dishonoring the presence of God. Only few of you are worshipping. Some of you right at the back. You are still having your coffee and tea. Some are eating. And some of you, in, in singular you call it, you know, there's a term, you can say, Linda Langa Sangame. You know, when people gather together in small groups, they say that. Hmm? The pastor has said, some of you, you are in your little groups talking with each other. So the Holy Spirit says, because you are not in unity, you are not in one accord, because no one is worshipping in one accord, I'm not going to do anything today. And that pastor said that again he was invited to preach. 
That day, he said, when he took the mic, everyone was worshipping God. And he said, on that day, great, powerful, powerful miracle signs and wonders happened on that day. So my precious people of God, where there is no unity, the presence of the Holy Spirit will not manifest. Because you need to understand, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God stems forth from a place called unity. This is why the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. He comes to destroy the unity between families, the unity between husband and wife, the unity between parents and children, the unity between uh, work colleagues. Because where there is no unity, we need to understand the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. There's a reason as to why Paul mentions that. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were not distracted. Everyone, they were in the same frame of mind. They were looking forward to receiving the Holy Spirit of God. And I pray right now, the 12 people who are in this session, or there could be more at your place, but from these 12 screens, I pray right now that you are listening to the word of God right now. I pray that you know, while listening that your mind is not running elsewhere. I pray that you are not thinking, you are not worrying about tomorrow. I pray that you, your worries have not got you carried to such an extent where you are looking at the screen, you are trying to listen to the word of God, but your mind is running elsewhere. My precious people of God, focus, being vulnerable, being in unity, together as the body of Christ is very powerful. This is the reason as to why the church is not seeing that many signs, wonders and miracles today. It's because of disunity. Pastors are fighting with each other. Congregation, the members are fighting with each other. And where there is disunity, do you think the Holy Spirit will manifest himself? No. Because if the Holy Spirit manifests himself in a place like that, just imagine if the Holy Spirit manifests in a place where people are already fighting. After that, they will keep fighting for the glory of God. So where people are following a foolish approach, the Holy Spirit will not manifest himself. This is why we need correction. This is why we need realignment. This is why, my precious people of God, we need to be in one God. We need to be in unity. Unity is an absolute must. And unity must first, of, first and foremost must, must start with our families. If you've had a grudge, a disagreement or any fallout whatsoever, any misunderstanding, any hurtful words said to your spouse, that is where things need to be corrected first. Then go to your children. And as you do this, you will begin to see how the power of the Holy Spirit will manifest in your family. That will trickle down to your ministry, to your workplace and everything else. Remember, unity is a very important key. Unity is an absolute must. If and for the Holy Spirit of God for manifest, the Bible says they were in one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven. They were taken by surprise. Do you know when the Holy Spirit of God manifests, he will take you by surprise. He will give you your solutions by surprise. He will take you by surprise to such an extent that you will not be able to fathom the kind of results that he gives you. When you look at your problems, with your little understanding that you have, you try and come up with a solution. But when suddenly the power of the Holy Spirit manifests, he will bring you a result that you never thought will happen. You know, I want to, I, I can testify of this because, um, because we recently moved. We uh, disconnected, we had to disconnect our internet, the broadband connection. 
and the company told because we are within the contract period that I will have to pay nearly a hundred pounds as a termination fee. Okay, so I said nothing to do if that's the case. Let it happen. I told that company, and I told the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. You are in charge. But can I tell you what happened just yesterday? I got an email saying that we have a credit balance. And I called them up and I said, what is this? They said, no, we can see that uh, the, something has been done by the senior management and they want to just let you walk out of this contract with, without charging you any uh, uh, termi termination fees. So my precious people of guilt, if we trust the Holy Spirit of God, he can do wonders. He can do amazing things, but the key is unity. Unity. You have to be in unity with the Holy Spirit of God. That is where it starts. You must want to be used by the Holy Spirit. That is number one. You must be willing to submit to the Holy Spirit. And if you are having a battle here, if you are struggling, not wanting to submit to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, there is no unity there. Then the Holy Spirit can't manifest himself because you have put a barrier between you and the Holy Spirit of God where you don't want to submit. Submission comes from unity. With that, powerful things begin to happen. Suddenly, the Bible says, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. The, the, the Holy Spirit is taking my eyes to this word, the whole house. Verse number two, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. My precious people of God, I declare right now, your home is blessed in Jesus' name. If you right now tell from the depths of your heart, if you tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I submit to you. This is what he's telling. He says, I will fill their whole house. Your entire house. Because this is what the Bible says. They were in a house and when the Holy Spirit manifested, his presence took over their whole house. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. I pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit will be rekindled in you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. May the power of the Holy Spirit of God be rekindled in your heart, in your inner being right now. In the name of Jesus. May make that your prayer right now and say, Holy Spirit, rekindle your fire right now. I need the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. Some of you here, over the last couple of weeks, it's like, it's as if your lamps have not been burning enough. And those lamps need to start burning once again. For the Lord. That fire, you need to have that fire of the Holy Spirit of God. Without the fire, nothing can happen. But with the fire of the Holy Spirit of God, you will walk into a place where there is great disaster. And even without you having to say anything or do anything, oh, that fire of the Holy Spirit you are carrying will do powerful things. Do you know this, what the Bible says? The Bible says in Acts chapter 19, the fire of the Holy Spirit in Paul was so strong that even things like handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from him. Long distances. And they were just kept on people who were sick, who were demon-possessed, and they were delivered, and they were healed. You must crave for the fire of the Holy Spirit. But for that to happen, submission is where it starts, where you submit to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit of God, I want to do what you want me to do. Not you want to do what you want to do, but you must want to do what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. And suddenly, when that happens, in the coming days, I pray that there will be suddenly, suddenly kind of moments where suddenly you will hear of breakthroughs. Suddenly, you will begin to see something much more big.
bigger and greater and something amazing than what you thought. Because the common tendency is whenever we face a problem, we try to analyze things. We try to put things together with our little understanding because understanding puts us into a place of comfort. Isn't that right? When you can try and make, when, when you try and understand the situation, you begin to think, oh, this is what the outcome will be. And that place puts you into a place of comfort when you think of a positive outcome. But my precious people of God, the Holy Spirit has something greater than even that positive outcome that you think you can have. Because what the Holy Spirit gives will be something good and something perfect. That's what James chapter 1 verse number 17, the Bible says. What your heavenly father gives from the throne room of his kingdom is good and perfect. Amen. Why don't you declare this over yourself and say, Holy Spirit of God, what you will give me and my family is good and perfect. Nothing less than that. Because I'm your child. So my precious people of God, suddenly the Bible says there was a, a sound from heaven as of a rushing wind. In Jesus' name, I pray right now for those of you, you are seeking direction as to what to do next, that there will be a sound from heaven that will follow. I pray over Luca right now, that as he's praying about his next steps, that the sound of heaven will begin to follow him right now. In Jesus' name. May there be a sound from heaven that will usher him into the next phase of his calling. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible says the whole house where they were sitting, it was filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Those of you who have uh, family members in your houses who are going through any sicknesses, right now I declare in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing right now as the power of the Holy Spirit of God begins to fill your whole house right now. Today is like a day of Pentecost. Like the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit of God is saying, because where, while we were worshipping, he said, Son, today I'm going to manifest myself. Because you are going to preach about me, I'm going to manifest. If we preach about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will manifest. The anointing will manifest because the anointing comes only from the Holy Spirit of God. Only from the Holy Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. The anointing comes from the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat upon each and every one of them. I declare over each and every one of you right now in this session, in this service right now, I pray in Jesus' name that the fire of the Holy Spirit of God will begin to sit upon each and every one of you right now in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in verse number four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right now I pray over each and every one of you, may you be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I sense the powerful anointing in this place right now. And thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for your presence right now. You have complete room to do what you want today. As we take a step back, Lord, as we decrease, may you increase Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, my precious people of God, we're going to worship, we're going to continue worshiping him in a moment because the Holy Spirit of God, I sense is going to powerfully move in this place tonight. And it's not going to be like an ordinary Sunday service that we have today because he wants to do something different. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We are going to continue to honor him today. We are going to continue to honor him today in Jesus' name. My precious people of God, as he fills you, as he fills you with his presence, one of the most important things you need to have is understanding of the Holy Spirit of God. You need to have a thorough understanding of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right now, I sense where there are heartaches, where there were confusion, where there were lies of the enemy being whispered into your minds, I sense the Holy Spirit bringing comfort into you right now. Into many of you, I sense the Holy Spirit of God is ministering right now. 
All those hurtful feelings are leaving you right now. Right now. He's touching you. Right now. In Jesus' name. Because one of the key things the Holy Spirit of God does with his presence is he gives comfort. He brings comfort because the Bible says he is the comforter. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse number 26, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Right now, my precious people of God, for those of you who are, who are bound by fear, those shackles of fear are being broken right now. Those chains of fear are broken right now in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit of God is imparting his comfort to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And to be honest, let me tell you the truth. The last couple of days, I was quite worried. I was quite worried because when I was told that I have to pay almost up to 100 pounds, to be honest, I was worried because it's not a small amount. But my precious people of God, if you go before the Holy Spirit, if you want to serve the Lord and do what he has called you to do, even those things that are beyond your control, just give them to him. Just give them to him. He will touch the heart of the person in that place. He will touch the heart of that person. That person that who, needs, who needs to be touched, who will give you a solution that no one else can give you. And I don't know who that person is in this company who did that, but I know the Holy Spirit of God touched someone's heart to wave off this disconnection fee. My precious people of God, some of you here, you need to rededicate your life to the Lord today and say, Holy Spirit of God, forgive me for every way that I have grieved you. Forgive me, Holy Spirit of God. For those moments I have taken you for granted. For those times I have neglected your presence. For those times I have not spoken to you. Forgive me, Holy Spirit of God. For those times where I have just carried on with my day without talking to you. Forgive me, Holy Spirit of God. He's imparting comfort to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he will give you great revelation. When the Holy Spirit of God touches you by his power, he will impart great revelation. In the midst of your problem, what you need is revelation. What will keep you without drowning in your situation is revelation. If you receive revelation from the Holy Spirit of God, you can remain focused. In that season of transition, where some of you are going through, some of you precious ones here, you are in a season of transition. And what you need during this season of transition is revelation. I sense the Holy Spirit of God. He is, is prompting me to tell to, to tell Preeti, Preeti in, in Thailand, when you go, you will see a much bigger picture. Something greater, something much more powerful, much more bigger, something much more interesting. And you will know that it's only God who can do that. Much more greater than your understanding. I want to release that over you right now. In the name of Jesus, revelation is what we need. Because he reveals. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come so that he can reveal the Father's heart to us. So to know the Father's heart, what we need is a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. This one Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse number 13. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. My precious people of God, may the Holy Spirit of God begin to speak to you about things to come. 
about the future. May he begin to reveal the things about your future in advance so that you can be prepared in this season. And in order for you to step into the next season, may he reveal how you should be prepared in this season already. In Jesus' name, if that is you, lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Holy Spirit of God, prepare me in this season. Prepare me in this season, Holy Spirit of God. Help me to be prepared in this season, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit of God brings deliverance. He brings deliverance. No one else can give you and I deliverance today. No one else can give us healing and deliverance other than the Holy Spirit of God. He does that to glorify Jesus in our lives. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse number 38, that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Today, may you receive a fresh anointing stirred up with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, when Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit, he went out, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Right now, those thoughts of fear are leaving some of you right now. In Jesus' name, those of you who joined today's service with thoughts of fear to do with your circumstances, to do with the challenges that you are facing, the Lord wants me to tell you. The precious Holy Spirit of God wants me to tell you. Tell them to be still and know that I am in control. Hallelujah. He brings deliverance. Then he gives you power. He gives you power. Why do you need power? My precious people of God, the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit in a child of God is that child of God witnessing for Jesus. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8, just before he ascended, Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. He will give you power. Power to witness. Power to say, I believe in Jesus. Power to boldly declare your belief in Jesus. Power to declare that you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we begin to worship Jesus again by honoring the Holy Spirit, may his presence move so powerfully right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are well. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be your God, by your presence, Lord, Spirit, you are well. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. How many of you are saying, Lord, speak to us today in Jesus' name? Speak, Lord. 
Speak, Holy Spirit of God. Rabatalaba Zatalada. Oeriralama Satelitalada. Let us speak up or away of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us speak up or away. Feel presence. Let us experience the glory of Your goodness. As the Holy Spirit of God prompts me, I'm going to speak today in Jesus' name, because I sense the Holy Spirit of God is moving in a different direction today in Jesus' name. Let us speak up or away. Rough your presence, let us speak your glory of your goodness. Let us speak out more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. We're going to pray for Luca. The Lord is prompting me to pray for Luca. You know. The Lord is showing me his heart's desire right now. His heart's desire is to become a worship pastor. His heart's desire for this next season, the Lord is telling me, is to be a worship pastor. And we're going to pray that this door will begin to open up for him in Jesus' name. That Lord may come through in the form of an invitation, Lord. Father, we pray that you will continue to order Lucas' steps, Lord. In Jesus' name, we declare. And we pray in line with Psalm 37 verse 23 on words, Lord, that you will continue to order your son's steps. And Father, may this come in the form of an invitation for your precious son in the name of Jesus. Let us be kind, more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be kind, more aware of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Neil, get ready for a busy season of serving God. Get ready for a season that, that is coming up for you, a busy season for you, where the Lord will begin to use you so powerfully in the name of Jesus. I see you receiving many invitations to worship the Lord, to play, to contribute, to support, to worship teams in the coming days in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, and may you do it with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. As the anointing begins, begins to rest upon you, rest in you, in Jesus' name. May you be used powerful for the glory of his name. In Jesus' name. Oh, 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 oh. Let us be kind, more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be kind, more aware of your presence. We're going to pray for over Teresa's husband, Henry. We rebuke every bodily pain that he may be experiencing right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, Lord, touch him by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Right now, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Precious Holy Spirit of God, may your power touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And Father, in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, that you will resurrect your power in you, that you will rekindle your fire, your fire, in 
inside of his heart, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless every cell of his being right now, in Jesus' name. We declare that he is an overcoming Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, let us speak out for a way of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be kind for a way of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be kind for a way of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, O Spirit, you are welcome in Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is by our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Thank you, Spirit God. Your presence, Lord. Let's all lift up our hands unto the Lord and say, Holy Spirit of God, make me a bold witness who will witness Jesus, who will stand up for Jesus, who will boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. So we'll boldly proclaim that I am your child, that you are my father, that I belong to your kingdom, Lord, not to this world, although I'm in this world, I'm not of this world. Thank you, Jesus, precious Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for one day you will take me into my father's kingdom. One day when I close my eyes, Holy Spirit of God, you will take me, precious Holy Spirit to where my Father has prepared me. As Jesus said, I go before you so that I can prepare a place for you. And Lord, I long to be in that place. And that day is going to be a glorious day. Precious Holy Spirit. <speaking in Spanish> Those of you here and anyone else who are connected to your lives, those of you who have gone through heart-related issues, in the name of Jesus, I declare that it will never reoccur in Jesus' name, that it will never happen in your life ever again in Jesus' name. What you have gone through in the past to do with your heart, Jesus name could it, it could be a failure a heart attack or anything anything to do with the heart I declare that it will not repeat in Jesus name and if you are a person who even had who are entertaining a thought of repetition may that thought leave you right now in Jesus name the Lord is telling me about uh, cleansing someone from suicidal thought. I don't know for who it is for, but I'm being obedient to the Holy Spirit of God. If you've been entertaining any suicidal thoughts, may He deliver you right now as we rebuke the spirit of death in Jesus' name. As we rebuke every spirit of depression in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. Your presence, Lord. Feel presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill the atmosphere. 
heart is right, I'll house long for to be yours. Those of you with children, the doctors have said that they have speech related issues in Jesus' name, we declare that right now, as we are praying and worshiping the Lord, that those issues to do with speech, that they are getting all cleared up in Jesus' name. Your presence, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Zambro Buzinta Kanada, Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. So we continue to worship the Lord. You can get your communion elements ready to partake in the table of grace. Oh, let us be more aware of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be more aware of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, my way. having trouble trying to bend your fingers may that loosen up right now in Jesus name if you are having problems folding your fingers like that may you receive your healing right now in Jesus name your presence Lord let every stiffness in your bones let every stiffness in the muscles be released right now in Jesus name in Jesus' name, your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us all take the body, the bread into our hands as we honor the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the greatest promise. And we have the greatest promise with us today only because of Jesus. Only because Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross. That is why Jesus said, If I do not go away, the Comforter will not come. And Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus gave himself as a willing sacrifice for your sin and for my sin. Jesus, thank you for taking my sin, my shame, my guilt, my sickness, my curse upon you. The Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that Jesus was made a curse for us. And he took all our curses upon him and he set us free. Thank you, Jesus. We honor your body. In Jesus' name, you may partake the body of Christ. Take the cup into your hands. The Bible says, This is the cup of your blessing. Hallelujah. Why don't you thank Jesus and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this is the cup of my blessing. Hallelujah. As you partake in the blood of Christ today, May every blood-related issue, may every bodily pain <coughs> leave you in Jesus' name. The Bible says 
because Adam and Eve sold us to the devil. We were far, far away from our Heavenly Father. But because Jesus shed his sinless blood, the Bible says, by shedding his sinless blood, Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 13 says, Jesus brought us closer to our Heavenly Father by the sinless blood that he shed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 5, the blood of Jesus washes our sin as white as snow. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sinless blood. We honor your sinless blood. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. You may partake in the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for there's a time in your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We are going to honor the Lord by singing a beautiful worship song about freedom. And may this be your testimony right now, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, in the coming months. No matter what comes against you, always be still and know that He who is in you is greater than anyone else out there in the world. Hallelujah. We are going to honor the Lord by singing unto Him. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let, let this be your benediction today. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom in this place. Lift your eyes to heaven, hallelujah. There is freedom, yes there is freedom in this place. Lift your eyes to heaven, there is freedom. There is freedom, freedom reigns in this place. We shower of mercy and grace, falling on every face. There is freedom, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place With showers of mercy and grace Falling on every face There is freedom Thank you, Lord
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.